You've gone behind the scenes of what it takes to make Royal Caribbean's icon of the seas. From the entertainment across four stages to the seven pools, the tallest and longest water slides, and flavors of all kinds. Now, how about the park? That's right, there's a park on Icon, and it's called Central Park. On this episode of Making an Icon, we're diving into how this park in the middle of the ocean is coming to life with more restaurants, bars, and entertainment. You'd have to see it to believe it. So let's get to it. Central Park is really an oasis in the middle of the ocean. It brings energy, but it also brings a sense of calm. In the case of Icon, every tradition has been evolved, and Central Park has been evolved with it. It will feel brand new. The sound, the music, the smells, the restaurants, the bars, the lounges, it will all bring the park a new sense of life, no matter what time of day. First, let's look back at where it all began. Central Park made its big debut on Oasis of the Seas in 2009, and it was as much a breath of fresh air in cruise ship design as it was an engineering feat. It was the first time an open space was designed into the middle of a ship, and it took teams of nautical engineers, designers, and architects to pull it off. It was revolutionary. There was an opportunity to create an open space, similar to Royal Promenade, but a different concept that was open to the sky, and that resulted in this idea of a central park. Through doing an architectural analysis, we had realized that Central Park in Manhattan was proportionate to the atrium that we had on Oasis class to the size of the ship. So the scale was comparable between the two on a ratio level. Then we started to think about what are we putting in that. So we had a very clear understanding that there should be some dining shops and some recreational area in the center. There were a number of big obstacles. One of them was structure because we were not only opening up the middle of the ship, winding that area and creating this atrium, but we were also breaking through the steel down into the Royal Promenade. So structurally, the spine and the backbone that is normally there in the center, that had to be rethought in a very novel way. Putting plants on the ship requires a certain climate. If the ship is moving from one climate to another one, you need to understand really well the plants you're putting there. You need to understand wind conditions and you have certain light conditions, and you need to be able to maintain them. And we have learned then from ship to ship and over the years, so we have been able to come with solutions that are longer lasting and easier to handle. Four more ships and years later, for ICON, the experts came together to build on what became a well-known favorite. The idea was simple, creating more ways to enjoy the park, day and night. What would be new? What would be reimagined? That's when things got interesting. Central Park has continued to evolve since we first built it on Oasis of the Seas. Continuous improvement is really one of our key mantras in the company. Our general philosophy is how do we make it better tomorrow? How do we make it better 10 years from now? And that's where all the dreaming comes in. This idea of respecting tradition, evolving, experiences that people really enjoy, and then new, innovative, revolutionary ideas. And Central Park, I think, fits very nicely into what is now tradition, but certainly is evolution. We really thought through, what is the identity of the park? What do our guests love today? Then we thought through, what could make the park even better? Part of that is giving the guests a reason to stay a while. Icon that's 20% more lush than the Oasis class. It's a beautiful setting, tens of thousands of plants and trees, and it is designed to be something like a park in any major metropolitan city where they have parks that people like to spend time in. We have found trees all over the world. They are unique. We have all different types of trees, Asian-inspired trees, true sort of oak-inspired trees, 
all throughout. This truly feels like a diverse park. We have four living walls instead of the two that you see today on Oasis Class. That takes a immense amount of substructure to hold all of these tree roots. So underneath Central Park is almost a full deck of just infrastructure to hold this up. The next set of evolution here for Central Park is connectivity to the water and being able to see all the way through to the ocean. Including additional glass elements through the Pearl, through Pearl Cafe, we were able to bring in the ocean and the connection to the ocean. From more plants and more views to more places for food and drinks, another key piece of Central Park are the restaurants and bars. What the teams came up with is a menu of new concepts and twists on the experiences people love. We wanted guests to feel the park, feel the breeze, hear the music, and previously our restaurants were all situated indoors. We opted for more outdoor seating for guests to sit outside. Empire Supper Club is an eight plus course dining experience with live music, cocktails or wine. The cocktails are designed by Tony Abugan, an amazing mixologist out of Las Vegas. For the Azumi restaurant, we've expanded how many hibachi tables we've had because our guests love the hibachi experience. It is the ultimate experience for adults and kids to both enjoy. And there's even brand new concepts. They're just a window. So Azumi in the park and Bubbles, two concepts that are rooted in convenience. They allow guests to go up, order, take away, and enjoy in the park. At Bubbles, we have a signature cocktail that's called the Garden Breeze. You can have any glass of champagne, Prosecco, also some bottle offerings as well, and some classics like a mimosa and a bellini. We brought to life the familiar as well as evolution. We know that Chops is a traditional favorite. We made it a little bit more contemporary and added premium steaks into the space. Park Cafe on Central Park is another great example of a favorite. We've introduced some new grab-and-go options as well as some new hot breakfast. Later into the evening, when the sun starts to set and the musicians start to play, we'll be able to offer cocktails and some light bites. For the first time ever, we're going to be introducing food at Trellis Bar. We wanted to curate a special menu that only Trellis guests can enjoy. In addition to that, we've had expanded the Zero Proof cocktails available on this menu at Trellis Bar. Bringing it all to life are some sweet tunes played by live musicians. And with more live music, Central Park hits a high note in more ways than one. Think jazz bands, quintets, guitarists, and more. There's more entertainment that is very much loved by our guests. It's got energy, it's incredibly appropriate as the day progresses. Central Park is a beautiful open space and live music is what activates that space. We will have guitar in the park, strings in the park, the quintet in the park. We will now have our own designated live music venue, which will be loose jazz and blues. We've had jazz clubs in the past, but this is bigger and better, and it will feature an incredible jazz and blues band. We want to make sure it's very welcoming and very inviting. We will be able to present everyone's favorite melodies, everyone's favorite songs with a modern twist. Taking a longtime favorite and reimagining it, let alone creating a park in the middle of a ship, was anything but a walk in the park. But what's in store? From the new spots to eat, drink, and sing along, to more of what everyone loves, will make Central Park that much more memorable. We really wanted to make sure that we brought back what our guests love, but brought it back in a way that brings some new energy. I would say that when the guests walk onto the ship, their mouth is gonna drop in awe. Get what you're and then I think they're just gonna say how, and they're probably gonna say wow. And the wow is just going to be the constant walk away that they'll feel space by space that people probably never thought could ever be achieved. Stay tuned for the final episode of Making an Icon, 
where it all comes down to the final stretch before Icons debut in Miami.